Welcome to all of our fans to my showcase of new units for the Wood Elf faction led by Neistra and Arahain, the sisters of Twilight. You will see what they look like, how they fight and what abilities, spells and stats they have. In my next video you will see new units from the Skaven faction clan Mulder led by Trot the Unclean, the master mutator. All these new units and lords are part of the legendary lord pack for Total War Warhammer 2 called the Twisted and the Twilight released on the 3rd of December 2020. If you are interested in the lords and want to see more about their factions and the campaign mode, you can check out my factions guide by clicking on the link up here on the right and in the description below. I am going to start with the new uniquely dual characters and legendary lord of the wood elves, the sisters of twilight. The fact that this lord is composed of two characters has created a unique situation where you have two health pools and the unit lord cannot die in battle until both are completely drained. This is further reinforced by the passive ability called Conjoint Destiny, which will replenish one character's health from the other when it goes below 20%. But this will happen only if you actually manage to catch this unit, as the sisters can use a Great Eagle or a Forest Dragon as their mount and fire very powerful range attacks called Talents of Dusk and Dawn. These abilities, which specialize in either massive single armor penetrating attack or multi-shot poison attacks, will be made even more powerful by another ability if the sisters are left unengaged. Gwyndalore's Vantage adds even more armor and base damage to the sisters as well as reload speed for as long as there are no enemies closer than 70 meters. Oh, and did I forget to mention the Forest Talker bonus? Because naturally the elves of the Atal Loren gain bonuses to melee defense and accuracy while fighting within a forest. But good luck engaging the scissors on their forest dragon mount in the first place, because despite its size it's almost as fast as the great eagle. The additional attack this lord gets when mounted on the forest dragon is based on poison which melts and instantly kills most small creatures. Another immensely powerful unit besides the forest dragon are the zodes, monstrous beasts from far away lands who are able to tap into the winds of magic and cast specific spells. Their huge lizard forms and their strong physique let them wield both magic and massive hammers. Their huge mass and weapons allow them to be an anti-large unit as well as armor piercing. As if this wasn't enough, their attacks impart a contact effect on target called dampen. This reduces the target's magical resistance for a short while, but it is refreshed with every hit. Though rare are the units which can survive these hits by Zod's oversized hammer for long. The spells they can cast are called Flesh to Stone and Earth Blood. The former adds a lot of armor for a short period of time to either the Zods themselves or other units, while the latter has a small AoE in which it regenerates health points of the targeted units. Both of these have a 200 meter range. The Zods regiment of renowned version is called Enigmas of Gairan. These are elites with more powerful spells from the lore of life, specifically Regrowth which not only heals the target unit, but also replenishes its vigor, more commonly known as stamina. And stamina is something this next unit has in spades. The Bladesinger's Elite are sword-wielding war dancers of the Atal Loren and are primarily an anti-infantry unit with the innate forest stalker trait. This is due to their low armor, large swords and the dodge ability. Your best tactic with them is to strike head-on into large formations of enemy units, even if they have high armor as these war dancers are equipped with armor piercing weapons. But if you attack a softer target, then feel free to activate their whirling death ability and let them loose among the enemy with even more weapon damage at the cost of armor penetration. It is an on and off ability, so it gives the Bladesinger's Elite good versatility. So if you have been enjoying this video thus far, please do not mind me reminding you to hit that like button below to not only help me, but also recommend this video to other Total War fans and subscribe if you would like to watch more videos like this. Probably the most iconic and unique legendary hero of the elves is Ariel, the queen of Atal Loren, and you will get to play with her in this DLC. She is a powerful spellcaster who is more than a capable melee fighter. As a forest spirit, she takes less damage from physical attacks while responding back with magical ones. She also spreads terror to nearby enemy units, even routing those with low leadership morale in other words. Her main ability are Greater Arcane Conduit and Blessings of the Ancients, both of which increase your power recharge rate, though you have to be in a forest for the Blessing of the Ancients to be active, while the Greater Arcane Conduit also gives Ariel higher power reserves. Her spells are mainly offensive and quite varied, but I also need to mention the map wide effects she has on allies because of her lower abilities called Life Bloom, a small regenerative effect, 
Agent's Protection, a ward which adds physical resistance, and Wrath of the Wood which adds missile damage and armor piercing. Besides Ariel, there is another hero you can now recruit for the Wood Elves, but it is a Total War Access exclusive free DLC content. I will leave an explanation and a link to how you can acquire this Glade Captain in the description below. This is a defensive anti-large melee hero which turns into a bow specialist with armor piercing. Its passive ability is Dance of the Luck which buffs melee defense of nearby units. The Glade Captain can also activate Deadly Onslaught to gain charge bonus and armor piercing damage, perfect for charging straight into the thick of the fray. Its unique feature is the Guided Projectile, meaning that arrows fired by this unit can hone in on its target and so she never misses a shot. Now it is time we take a look at the Great Stag Knights, a monstrous shock cavalry unit without equal in this DLC. Their huge size and majestic antlers give them great stomping and piercing power. But not only is this unit armor piercing, it also features the Vanguard deployment trait, which when coupled with the forest stalking means you can pull out nasty ambushes from the forest anywhere on the map with this unit. Their Regiment of Renown version is called the Lost Sylvan Knights, who not only glow like apparitions, but also act like them, as they have a significant resistance to physical attacks. Besides an actual dragon, no other elven unit can break through enemy lines like these tag knights can. Another free addition to the Wood Elves is the legendary Lord Drysha, for owners of the realm of the Wood Elves in the Mortal Empires. In the campaign, she leads the Wargrove of Wu faction, it is among the most powerful forest spirits of Fatal Loren. Her starting units are Manevolent Dryads and Three Men. This lord is not only a forest spirit, but also a spellcaster, which amounts to being able to sustain a lot of physical punishment while dishing out magical attacks and spells. Among these are Pit of Shades, a damaging vortex, Occam's Mind Razor, a major melee damage self buff, the Withering and Enfeebling Foe, two strong hexes, the Penumbra Pendulum and Melkor's Mystifying Miasma direct damage spell. Its abilities also include Frenzy, Smoke and Mirrors, Rouse to Wrath and Blessings of the Ancients, so keeping to a forest as you fight with her is always a good idea. Her fantastically resolved Lord ability adds multiple buffs the less health the Lord has to her and her nearby units. Lord Dracha exerts a negative minus 5 public order on local enemy provinces while it adds 10% to weapon strength and 5 melee attack for Dryad units in her own army. And on that note, I do have to mention the Wraths of the Frozen Heart, a regiment of renowned unit of Dryads. These are particularly effective for preventing cavalry from cycle charging or stopping a missile unit from retreating. It has both Frostbite and Frenzy abilities, so one to slow the enemy down and the other to tear them to shreds. It is only fitting I finish off this video with the Spellweaver, a new spellcaster lord who can be recruited to wield the lords of life, beast, shadow, dark and high magic. These are essentially wizards with forest stalking traits. As for the abilities, they have the arcane conduit, blessing of the agents and locks blessing. Now as I leave you with these cinematic shots of these units in combat, I will post cards about my other videos on similar subjects. Thank you for watching and I wish you all happy gaming.